Now if you've got a thriving reef aquarium, the calcium, carbonate and magnesium is going to be aggressively pulled out of the water by the corals. If you have lots of corals, you need to expect that the calcium, carbonate and magnesium level is going to drop. If it is not dropping, that is a bad sign because it means your corals are not growing. If it is dropping, that's a good sign because it means that your corals are actually using it. So, it is really important that you test the calcium and at least the KH or alkalinity on a regular basis because it is going to fall and it is a good sign if it is falling. So over time these levels will slowly go down, slowly go down and slowly go down and then you can test them and then you can slowly bring them up, slowly bring them up and slowly bring them up. Now if you test and dose, so therefore you test it and then you increase your dose and you dose regularly then you will end up with some sort of plan that actually works on the basis that you actually do it. But the way a reef aquarium seems to work for your average human is that for three months you're pretty good and you actually do add the supplements and you actually do test it. Then you get a bit busy, a bit lazy, a bit distracted, a bit hungover and you find that after a while you just stop testing it and you may or may not add the additive. Then you get a bit lazier, a bit more complacent and then you don't even add it with any regularity. And if you're not adding it with any regularity or consistency, then you can't change it. Because if there's no stable base to change your additions, then it's all up to luck. So what I would recommend doing is enjoying your three months of um, keenness. Because during that time, if you have a dosing pump, you can use that three months to stabilize how much of the supplements is going into the aquarium. That way, during the three months when you're not all that focused, then at least your dosing pump is adding the right amount that was current for last month. So there's a very good chance that your levels are gonna stay stable. So typically if you do not have a dosing pump, you'll find that you do it good for three months, then you don't do it good for three months, then your tank starts looking crap, then you kick yourself in the ass, and then you start doing it good again. If you have a dosing pump, the fluctuations are much lower, and even when you don't do it properly, you find that everything happens much slower, and you can get away with a lot more. So, in a perfect world, we're gonna run nice high calcium level, say about 420, 450 parts per million, uh, most people dose the calcium and the magnesium to the same quantity. This is not a terribly effective means. You are better off testing it and keeping it between sort of 1200 and 1500. Um, most people don't bother testing it, but it is definitely a good idea and even something you could drop down the aquarium and get us to do it every now and then for you. And then the alkalinity or KH, most people keep between about 8 and 12 dKH. So if you keep these levels up nice and high, then you'll find your corals can thrive and these building blocks can allow the corals to grow. If you put them on a dosing pump, then you'll end up with stability in your aquarium and it will end up going really well. Now the two other things that you're really gonna have to consider are your, besides your trace elements, and trace elements are something that if you get everything else right, um, are going to be very valuable. So looking at some of the trace element supplements are highly advisable. Now the other two things that I